when you understand the things of God then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish anything that dominates the thought of a man you get it so meaning that you need to have the right thought about something but when you see his government first his rule first his interest first we can know the interest of God from the written word we can know what he is putting first Let's open with a word of prayer. Jehovah God, our Father, we are here gathered in your presence. Father, we pray that let your presence be with us. Holy Spirit, minister to us. Take us deeper in your word. Bring to remembrance all the things and teach us new things. Take over, Master Teacher, and expound your word to us in details and with the revelation. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. And our, our topic of today is God's righteousness. Uh, that topic is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. That is a quotation. It is quoted from Jesus. Jesus spoke it. Those are the words of Jesus. But first of all, let's build a base. Let's build a base from that scripture. Seeking is like looking for something. Looking for something that you need dearly. Aiming at something that you don't want to miss. Striving after something that you don't want to lose at all. Regardless of the terms and conditions that surround it. You can find it, but there will be terms and conditions around it. And because you're seeking it, you're ready to surrender something in order to achieve that. Hallelujah. And then there is a word in there that fast. In all things you are seeking, put that one. Give it a priority. Give it a priority. It should be, it should be ahead of all things. It should be ahead of all things. Then the next word there is kingdom. Kingdom. That is an area like Buganda here. Where the king's influence eh, is felt. His intentions are done there. Then we come to the next word, righteousness of God. Right standing with God. Standing right with God. So when we talk about the righteousness of God, Jesus was very specific in that. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, meaning the righteousness of God. And all these things will be given to you as well. When Jesus walked this earth, he saw the way people were doing things. He saw the things people were seeking after. The way they were doing things, they wouldn't achieve even what they were running after. And he cautioned and said, you people, the way you're doing things is not right. But I have come to show you that if you want to do things right, seek his kingdom. 
and his righteousness. And it is in his kingdom that you learn how to do things according to his order. Now that we are, we are looking at the righteousness of God, it is specific that a righteousness of God. Do you think there is another type of righteousness? Because in this, there are two characters here. There is man and God. Then there is the righteousness of man. You remember Paul? Before he became Paul, when he was Saul, that man was very righteous. The righteousness of man. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 5 verses 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of God. Those are the words of Jesus. Mark them. Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. It is said that in his class, there were only three. And was being taught by Professor Gamaliel. So strict a man that the highest number in his class would be only three students. And he told them that Paul knew the five books of the Bible. For example, before they put their chapters and verses, he knew them offhead without missing a comma without missing a dot. Which means he knew the law. He was the lawyer or a professor of those days. Hallelujah. But this is a man who had read all those books, including the prophets, the Psalms. And he was persecuting the church. Seriously. Very zealous for his religion. Very zealous for what he knows. But he got it from the Old Testament writings. And all these writings were focusing on the coming Messiah. But he, he wouldn't get a revelation. So unless our righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. In the brief how about today? Do we have teachers of the law? The law of God this time. Sometimes in the Old Testament, I mean in Jesus' day, they were called religious leaders. These Pharisees and Sadducees were also called religious leaders. Because they knew the law. And that's why even today, there's religion. And there is a small a very thin line dividing religion and relationship. For us, in, in Christ Jesus, we have a relationship. Outside Christ, if you're seeking God outside Christ, then you, then you have a religion. Hallelujah. That is religion. Jesus emphasized that first, the kingdom. And if your righteousness does not surpass the one of the religious leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees. You will not even enter. There is another scripture in John. It says, you will not even see the kingdom of God. Religiously, people are waiting for the kingdom of God to manifest. But in relationship, the kingdom of God is here. And Jesus said, seek. It means there are those who have not yet found. Even if the kingdom is here, even when the kingdom is here, there are those who have not yet found the kingdom. There are those who have not yet seen the kingdom. John the Baptist said, repent. For the kingdom of God has arrived. Jesus in his first announcement said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Which means the kingdom of God is here. And now, there is emphasis 
that seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness. And all those things you are looking for, all those things you are running after, all those things you are yearning for, will be just to be added. Why? If you do things right, according to God's righteousness, everything shall be added. You can only do things right when you are in the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. That's what Jesus said. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. It is, takes you and me to believe that word. How many people are out there pursuing things? Go to the eastern world. How many religions? You can't count them. And what they believe, you listen to it, it's just weird. Religions like Buddhism, Hinduism, they worship a cow. They are those who worship a cow. Why do they worship a cow? They believe if a human being dies, eh, this body eh, gets out of this body. It comes back in the form of a cow. So they call it reincarnation. When that cow dies, it will come back in another form. So they believe there are a number of reincarnations that will bring that soul back to man eventually. And they hold that dearly in their hearts. That one time, they will die, become a cow, die, become a goat, die, become something, die and come as a human being again. Hallelujah. So those are, those are the beliefs that are out there. Those are the beliefs that are out there. You may watch other people believing in their own things and you're like, these guys are lost. I wish they would know. But that's the, the, the much they know about their faith. Why did Jesus emphasize this? Why do you think? He says, put it first. In all you are seeking, put it first. The kingdom and his righteousness. It is an emphasis. People have said, first things, first. First things, first. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalms 89 verses 14. Jesus was emphasizing this because righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. The foundation of God's throne is righteousness and justice. And God, the king in heaven, and you, as an ambassador, his ambassador on earth, you subscribe to that kingdom. What you have to do here must be what is done in heaven. His kingdom must be, must be experienced here through you. And his will be done by you. So you cannot bow before that king if you don't have his righteousness. You cannot bow before that king if you are not in his kingdom. So righteousness is God's character. The impact of that character must be seen in the fruits, in our fruits. We must exhibit that. Let people not begin asking, you look like, eh? you look like Christo. Christo. That name, Christo, wasn't a badge of honor. Because it was a nickname from the world. Yeah? A nickname from the world. A nickname sometimes is not a beautiful name. Some of you have more than two names. 
Leave alone the one, the one of English, the one the, maybe they masked you or sprinkled water on you and gave you that name out of your choice. There are those other names, your childhood names. Those days when you were like three or four, if you didn't get that name, blessed are you. Hallelujah. But those names are common. I remember giving an example here of a young girl. She was the only girl in the family. All the siblings were boys. And they gave her a nickname, Galo. Galo. So she grew up. She had not yet differentiated that. She liked the name because it was at home. But when she went to school, after P7, now she goes to senior one, now boarding school. She felt she was big now. So on the day they took her to school, mommy, her mom called her, Galo, Galo, first come. She looked around, and she looked bigger than the name, and the name was so small, and she said, Mommy, I have grown up. I've grown up. Don't call me Galo. Don't call me Galo. Don't call me Galo. So there are those names. So Christian was also a nickname. Was also a nickname. But we have adopted it. But don't stop there. We're supposed to be called children of God. Because if you stop at Christian, you could be a follower of people who are following another follower whom they even don't know. But because he has a bad Christian, we follow. That's why we have today buildings like this with a certain symbol that resembles a cross, but it's not a cross. And they carry the Bible. And what they do is different. They are described as cult churches. But they proclaim Christ to a certain level. Proclaim Christ to a certain level. But you and me should have the righteousness of God because we subscribe to him. Hallelujah. Because the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. Hallelujah. That's my point number one. Point number two. Righteousness is a gift to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 21. God made him who had no sin to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In him we become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. In Christ we become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God is a divine gift to us. In exchange, a divine gift to you, in exchange for your sin. At the cross of Calvary. That's why Jesus was crucified. When they crucified him, he took our sins, he took our griefs, he took our sorrows, and he gave us the righteousness of God. And we can only exhibit that righteousness of God when we remain in him. When we remain in him, Hallelujah. So outside him, we shall be exhibiting the righteousness of man. We shall be exhibiting the righteousness of man. Let's read uh, 1 Peter 2.24. He himself bore our sins in his body on that tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed. Our life we are living for righteousness. We live for righteousness because we are in Christ. 
We live in the rightness of God because we are in Christ. And God used Jesus to transfer that righteousness unto us in exchange for our sins. So when you're seeking the kingdom, be ready to surrender. Be ready to surrender. There are those sweet things in the world that righteousness and the kingdom demands you to surrender them totally. That's why our other friends, when you tell them, hey, guy, Jesus loves you. He said, I know that. So when are, you, when are you confessing him as Lord and Savior? Wait a minute. There are certain things I'm still enjoying. When I finish, I'll come. You are there because that is your time. My time is also coming. Actually, I am on the way. Those are the excuses our friends out there give. I am on the way coming. Just wait. Because there's something they want to accomplish. Others have a reason that if I enter that kingdom and that righteousness of God how will I achieve my spouse they know that it is not right to do it in the kingdom but they want to do it outside the kingdom hallelujah they want to do it outside the kingdom so that when you are finished with it, then they can now come. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that all the things you're looking for, the world's running after, if you are in the kingdom and you are in the righteousness of God, they will just be added. You don't need to pray. In Christ, you are in the source. All things belong to him. Created by him and for him. Look at the story of creation. I was wondering why God didn't make man fast. But for the sustenance of man, God had to put the whole store on earth before the man who enjoys it comes. He had to put all the comfort before Adam comes. He had to see that there is day and night. Water is given a boundary that you stop there. Land is here. Animals are there. Fish is there. Birds are in the air. Look at that beauty that God put. And then lastly, but not least, he created man. Which means he put everything that man needed. He knew man will need this, need this, will need a chair. Put a tree there. But don't give, didn't give him a chair. Didn't give him a bed. He hid it in that tree. He said, I put you in charge. Whatever you need, pick from there. Pick from there. You can eat whatever you like. Hallelujah. So, being in the kingdom and in his righteousness, you are just inside. You are in a store or a supermarket. You can understand it better. In a supermarket. When you look this way, all those shelves are stacked. All around you, everything you need, you just pick from there. So Jesus said, if you enter that kingdom and in his righteousness, all those other things will just be added. Will just be added. You don't have to struggle for them. It will just be added. What it takes you and me is the brain. And God speaks to our hearts and speaks to our minds. So he spoke to Noah that built an ark. Just like that. And Noah began picking things. He was using his brain. So you and me, it is very vital that we use our brains. Everything that we need is all around us. God has already prepared it. Hallelujah. It takes you to listen to the voice of God. 
or what impacts in your brain or what impacts in your heart and you do according to his word and that what you are looking for will just be added hallelujah my point number three is in proverbs 14 34 righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a disgrace to any people a nation is simply a group of people A group of people. So in righteousness, a nation is exalted. A nation is lifted. Righteousness makes a nation great. That is you. And when you're exalted, what happens? An exaltation is a lift. When you are lifted, every aspect of your life is lifted. There is an improvement. There is prosperity. And then, when you have all that, what comes? Celebrations. So if you want to be elevated, and I know you need it. I also need it. Everyone needs it. Even those who are not in the kingdom. They need it, but are looking for it in their own ways. But you and me, who are in the kingdom and in God's righteousness, let's look for it in the right way and we shall be elevated. Hallelujah. Amen. Every one of us, God has given a brain and a gift and a talent. Hallelujah. Your brain tells you there is a problem here. Can I find a solution? If you can identify a problem and find a solution for it, people will pay you for solving that. When you identify a need and you provide a solution, people will ask you that, should we pay you? Of course they are willing to pay. Why don't you bring it and we pay you? Then you say, okay. Every one of you has a talent has a gift to solve a problem around here. Hallelujah. So you're wondering, why, why have I seen a problem? Around you there, there is a problem that needs to be solved. But it takes you to think. So when you solve that problem, you'll be lifted financially, lifted economically, even socially, you will be lifted. They say, hey, I have this problem. Oh, there's this person who can help you very fast. And in a very good way. Trusted. Because you are in the kingdom. They will not doubt you. Because you are doing things right. They will not doubt you. Like in your case, you can repair your car and say, mm -hmm, test it for two days. If it still behaves the same way, bring it back. I'm not asking for money right now. But when you see it working better, you, 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 you just come back and tell me it is working well. And the person will come excited and say, now, now you've done all this. I, I wonder what to do for you. He said, uh, just, just give me something so that I also continue living in Kampala here. Hallelujah. So that is how God has put us here. When we are in the kingdom, when we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all those things that we need will just be added. Hallelujah. And you'll be lifted and you'll be exalted and you'll celebrate. Point number four is in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Paul had a revelation of a Christian that in this world you are a ruler, yes? You are a ruler. And when you are a ruler, every kingdom has an army. 
So Paul pictures you and me as a soldier. And his reference was a Roman soldier. The way those guys would dress when they are going for battle. That breastplate is a metallic thing. It is, it is forged in such a way that it appears like a man's chest. And it covers the chest. Covers the chest. It is a metal. And they polish it. They polish it. Even when the enemy is near. The way they polish it, it will would, it would reflect some light. It will reflect some light. And in the battle array, changing positions here and there, there is a way it blinds the enemy. That's why they would polish it. So the righteousness of God is a garment for your defense and your protection. But when you take on that battle, in the kingdom and in his righteousness, the battle belongs to the Lord. But why was Paul saying that you should, you should be dressed in such armor? There are other pieces of that armor. There is a helmet of salvation. There is a shield of faith. Belt of truth. Shod on the shoes of the redness of the gospel. Sword of the spirit. He was, he was looking at the Roman soldier and attaching it to that trying to illustrate that you as a child of God you need to be dressed in that way. And righteousness is a breastplate. It protects your heart. Righteousness protects your heart. But when you go to that battle it is not you going to fight. In the kingdom you don't fight. You just present yourself there because you represent God and you are his address on earth. You must be there at the battlefront. Take God there. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, you remember what they call the Ark of the Covenant? That was God's presence amid his people. But who were carrying it? It was the people carrying it. So you, as you, in God's kingdom, and in his righteousness, you are the tabernacle of God. And God's presence is in you. So you need to take God there. In that battlefront. Because the battle belongs to him, he will fight your battles. And in that, victory is sure. Hallelujah. Amen. When victory is won, give him praise. Give him praise. You can do better than that. When victory is won, when victory is won, and it is a sure deal that victory is yours, victory is mine, then we can celebrate. So don't underestimate yourself. I wish I was like pastor. I wish I was like bishop. I would now command these demons to go. But uh, you carry God's presence. You carry God's presence. In the Old Testament, God told Moses that my presence shall be carried by men and they shall be special people and you are a special person to carry God's presence. Not in one minute should you doubt that God is absent. He is the inside of you. He is the inside of you. As a child of God, let that be known. Let your conscience have it. Let your body feel that I carry God inside of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Paul was saying that remember, just a reminder, remember that your body is the temple of God. A reminder remember your body is the temple of God. It must be in your conscience all the time that I carry God. When your conscience is telling you I carry God, it tells you that you have the righteousness of God. 
Don't behave like people in the world. Yeah? With the badge, Christian. Maybe on the shirt, on the back. Yeah? It is very easy to carry a badge and yet you don't belong there. Hallelujah. Yes. There are people who carry that badge, Christian. But they are not. So, but yours is inside. It speaks to you. It speaks to you that you're a child of God. You are right. You're doing things the right way. You're doing things God's way. And you're doing things according to his influence and according to his will. His will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. So, when you're dressed in that, in that armor, in that badge, eh? you remember David? David went to the battlefield. He had just taken food. But he met his brothers. King Saul was there. And the Philistine was tormenting them 40 days. Who'd just rise up and say, Dare you pick a man and fight me? And the soldiers' knees are like this. Because the man was so huge. Just his stature would scare the soldiers of Saul and say, You servants of Saul, I defy you. They had all the attire, they had all the armor for battle. But they didn't acknowledge the king of kings. They were using what was physical to show that they are soldiers. But when David arrived, he told them, you guys, this man here, a man like you, a man like you and, you, and you're trembling at his word? Me, I can face that man. Say, but you're young. That man has been a warrior all this lifetime. He has the experience. David in himself said, the battle does not belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. And God was speaking to him that just remember your experience. Tell them your experience. I have been in the wilderness alone. And I would hold the lion, tear it. Hold the bear, tear it. That same God, that same God who saved me from the lion and the bear will save me from that man. After all, he doesn't have a covenant with God. Hallelujah. You have a covenant with God. Amen. So remember your covenant with God. It is never broken. The choir sings from here that the covenant I have with God can never be broken. True, it can never be broken. Hallelujah. There are so many battles. Eh? If you stand and wait for the salvation of the Lord, there are certain battles the Lord just brings testimonies. But he fights them and finishes them before he tells you. The Lord come and tell you that there was this thing here. We dealt with it. And then all of a sudden it went. We don't know what happened. But that was through your prayer. Hallelujah. So children of God, I like calling myself a child of God. Do you? Call yourself a child of God. Upgrade from Christian. That is, that is, the, that, that is the world badge. That's the world badge. But you should be called a child of God. And you must call yourself, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Just touch your chest and say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I belong to the kingdom. I belong to the kingdom of God. I belong to the kingdom of heaven. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus.